The guy said nothing, so I repeated again. You can drop me here. He says, no, 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 not yet. You're not ready. I remember this like it was yesterday. My brother and I were home alone for the night while our parents went out with their friends. He's 17 and I'm 13. My brother left soon after my parents, even though he was supposed to stay home. Recently, a new neighbor just moved in next door, some old guy. I saw him speaking with our parents the first day at his house. Anyway, we live in Florida and it was the winter time, so it wasn't too cold. I say this because we have a pool in our backyard that's heated and I love swimming. At around 10.30 p.m. I decided to go swimming. I called my friend to let him know. So he said he'll come over. He only lives about a street away. I started to swim some laps and as I come up for some air, I saw the old man from next door standing on the outside of our fence leaning against the gate with the creepiest smile on his face. I lost all form in my swimming strokes and completely stopped. I played it cool and I said hi. He didn't even say hi, he went straight to, I noticed that your parents aren't home. I told him that my older brother is and he then said, nah, he's not. I didn't see him when I was watching you through your bedroom window. I didn't say anything, I was just shocked. He opened up the gate and started to speed walk toward me. I began to back up in order to climb out of the pool while yelling help. He was getting closer then he stopped and looked behind me. My friend was on the other side of the fence running toward us and also on the phone with the cops. My neighbor ran into his house. The cops came but the old man denied everything. He didn't know that my friend recorded him before he called the cops. He was arrested and eventually moved away. I don't know what his plan was but I'm glad my friend showed up. Obviously, my parents were pissed at my brother for leaving when he was supposed to stay at home to watch me. But they were happy I was okay. To this day, I haven't seen that guy since. While in college, I love finding snakes. So a friend of mine from the herpetology club, he showed me this road that he would cruise for snakes. Cruising is when you drive slowly down the old back roads. After dark, looking for snakes that have slithered onto the warmer road to heat up. The road we took was about four miles and had around four houses on it. We had taken a few laps on this road and we were making our final pass. There are two houses near the beginning of the road, one at the end and one near the middle. We were getting close to the center when we see movement on the left side of the road. There are a lot of animals on this road, so we weren't surprised to see this. However, what shoots out is this kid, probably around eight or nine, torn blue jeans and a ripped dark t-shirt. He takes one look at us and his face is a mix of fear and pain. He looked back really quick from where he had come out of, then booked it across the road. The guy I'm with, he gets out of the car chasing to see if he's alright, and I pull the car up to the point where the boy went into the woods. I'm starting to get out of the car when my friend walks back quickly, and he just says, let's go now. We hop in the car and tear out of there. He says there's a graveyard about 10 yards into the woods where the boy had ran, and it was five gravestones with the same death date. They all had the same last name and one was a boy who was nine. We never came back for the rest of the summer to that road. We usually would go out once or twice a week, but not anymore. The next year when my friend had graduated, I took my girlfriend out to that road. 
we are going early to try and find different types of snakes because different snakes tend to move at different times of the day. We got to the house near the graveyard and there's three men doing some yard work. I rolled down the window and I explained what I was doing and asked them about the graveyard. Apparently their dad's brother's family had all died and their space heater caught on fire around 20 years ago. I kept pushing and asking them about it. And they told me the firemen or whoever does it have found all the bodies in the rubble except for the youngest son, but they assumed he was too far burned. I asked if they had a little brother and the 6'4", 250 pound man said he was the youngest. When I gave the description of the kid I saw, they all went white. They all have, you know, individually seen the kid I was talking about. And he always runs into the gravesite. I have never been on that road again. Honestly, I have no plans on going back. I'm not too fond of the paranormal. My aunt and uncle moved into a new house. I was staying with them for a week, but I got a weird vibe about their house. I was sleeping in the attic and around 3 a.m., I woke up to find my six-year-old cousin standing next to my bed staring at me. He just started telling me about his imaginary friend, Maury. The next day, when I asked his parents about it, they told me he didn't have an imaginary friend. And they said he never had one in their previous house. They decided to ask him about it, but he said he had no idea what they were talking about. The next night, around 3 a.m., I woke up again to find my little cousin staring right at me. He kept repeating over and over. Why did you tell? Why did you tell? Why did you tell? I tried to talk to him and he started telling me about how Maury would appear in his dreams at night to eat dinner with his family when they were at the table. I asked him how he met Maury and he told me that Maury came to him and asked him if he can come inside of him. He said, yeah, sure, come in. That's when Maury started to come beside his bed every night to talk to him. The next day, I told his parents, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was making it up. On my final night in the house, I was awoken by a faint thumping under my bed. At this point, I was very scared, but I worked up the courage to peek under my bed. I found my little cousin hiding under there. He said he was protecting me. He told me that Maury couldn't trust me and he wants me gone, and that Maury won't hurt me if he's there to protect me. Then he started going back and forth with someone who wasn't there, moving around like he was wrestling with someone. Then I heard the words, kill him. It was a deep, raspy voice that I've never heard before. Those were the last words I heard him say. I ran faster than I ever have before and made it at least three blocks down the road before my aunt and uncle caught up with me and begged me to come back. They asked me what had happened and when I told them, again, they didn't believe me. When we walked back to the house and went upstairs, my cousin was in his bed, sound asleep. I left the next morning and never went back. That was a very creepy experience in my life very creepy and I can't compare it to any other experience ever and it's extremely difficult for me to talk about because I really don't know what was going on my cousin doesn't remember while my aunt and uncle still don't believe me at the same time my cousin has always been weird ever since that day and he doesn't make a lot of friends I don't know I figured that I'll get this story out there to other people so I won't keep it bottled up inside. To add to that, I've never been back to my cousin's house because I don't trust him, I don't trust my aunt, and I don't trust my uncle. Something's up with that family and it isn't something good. Just be careful of the company you keep. Whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, just always be careful. 
is you never know the intentions of people around you. This happened to me about seven years ago. I worked at KFC through high school and college. I went to college really close to where I grew up, so staying at the same work location was very easy for me. One day I went to work at 4.30 and had to work to drive through half of my shift due to someone calling off. It seemed like a regular day until we were getting ready to close. At around 10.50 p.m., this guy walked in and stood by the front register. He looked weird as if he just came from a costume party. I let him know that when he's ready to order, just tell me as I'm cleaning due to us closing in 10 minutes. He told me that he wasn't ordering and wanted to know what time he closed. I told him 11 p.m. and he left. I'd noticed that he got inside a van that has been sitting in the parking lot for hours. I thought it was weird but continued to clean up. There were a few of us still on shift. Again, everything seemed regular that night. I grabbed the trash and went outside toward the dumpster. As I approached the dumpster, I noticed someone trying to hide in the shadows behind the dumpster. I stopped immediately, and I tried to squint in order to get a better look. Then whoever that was behind the dumpster moved back so I wouldn't be able to see their shoes anymore. But they didn't know I already saw them. I turned around immediately and went back inside. I told my manager he went to the door with one of my co-workers to get a better look. They couldn't see anyone, so they went outside to check it out and left me inside by myself. I felt safe while they were outside. I went to the cash register at the drive-thru to cash out for the night. Then on my left, I swear I saw the man from earlier in the window. He had a blank look on his face, then he started hitting the window with a dead raccoon trying to get in while yelling my name. I ran to the front door as my manager and co-worker were walking back in. I frantically told them what happened, and my manager ran back outside to the window while my co-worker stayed with me and called the police. The guy left before my manager was able to get him. The cameras outside got the license plate, but it didn't match the description of the van, and the plates were registered to a woman. This guy was never found, and I am forever worried that he will come back for me. I was 14 years old. I was walking home from school with a group of friends. Once we arrived in my neighborhood, I said my goodbyes to my friends. I was a few trailers away from my house and I heard some footsteps. I thought it was a neighbor, but when I turned around, no one was behind me. I continued walking home and I heard the footsteps again. I was dumb and I was a curious kid, so I called out hello but no one answered. I continued walking and I heard the footsteps again, but this time the footsteps were faster. I turned around to find a grown man in a ski mask running toward me, so I ran too. But the guy grabbed me. I was struggling to escape. I elbowed him in the chest and kicked him in the, you know where. He let me go and let out a scream of agony. I continued to run to my house and I anxiously grabbed my keys and I feel a hand covering my mouth, and he tells me to shut up. He took me to his trunk and shut it. Luckily, he didn't check my pockets for a phone. I grabbed my phone, called my stepfather, and thank God he answered. I told my stepdad I was kidnapped, and he laughs. I asked him, why do you laugh? I'm in danger. After I said that, he sounded convinced that I was kidnapped. I told him to track my phone, so he did. He was close to where I was. Minutes felt like hours. As I felt the car jump and it stopped, I heard the kidnapper and my stepdad arguing. I kicked in the trunk. I heard fighting and the trunk opened. And my stepdad found me in there and took me home. I know the kidnapper is still out there somewhere. And wherever he is, I hope he rides in hell. And I get it. Why didn't he call the police? I don't know.
I was at home late one night and decided to walk my dog as we usually went for a daily walk. I lived in a small unincorporated suburban town that was fairly wooded. Everything seemed fine 10 minutes into the walk as we often took different routes when we went for walks to keep things fresh. While we're walking, I noticed a van that had seemed to be watching us, but it kept its distance. I began to worry, so I decided to cut the walk short and return back home. I took a wooded path back home, hoping that the trees would hide our whereabouts, if indeed this van was watching us. As my dog and I reached the end of the path and onto the street, I heard the sound of an engine rumble toward us. The van's window rolled down, and I heard a man's voice shouting something at me, but I could not make out what it was. I quickly started running back down the wooded paths so they could not follow me in the van. While trying to run back, my dog stopped and started barking. I stopped and I looked back and noticed that two men were running toward me. Outnumbered, the men attacked me and knocked me out. I regained consciousness and noticed that my dog was gone, along with the men. I reached for my phone and contacted the police right away. The police and the paramedics arrived and took me to the hospital. At the hospital, I was questioned by the police and informed them what happened. I told them that I was worried about my dog's safety and what those men could possibly have done to my dog. I informed them that my dog was a French Bulldog breed and that they probably took him to breed or sell as he was an expensive dog breed. I then remembered that my dog had been wearing his GPS dog collar that I had purchased for him in case he had run away. The police were able to locate the location of the collar with the application on my phone. The police arrived to the location which appeared to be an old rundown warehouse. They entered while I waited outside for my safety. I waited nervously while the police searched the building. After a while, I was allowed to enter the building as I was informed that there was no sign of anyone there, but they did locate several dogs caged up inside. The police informed me that it appeared to be a dog breeder mill. I was able to locate my dog and we left to go back home. The men who attacked me and ran the dog meal were never found. I later moved to a different town for my dog and my safety. To this day, I always worry about seeing those same men every time I walk my dog. At the time of this story, I was about 12 years old. We lived in Wichita, Kansas. We had just moved there from Garden City, Kansas. My family also lived in a duplex in a rough neighborhood. Less than a block away from the house was my brother's school. And on the weekends and holidays, we would go to his school to play and do kid stuff. Well, one Thanksgiving break, my brother and I went to the basketball courts just to get some shots up. So we had been there for about an hour when I got a strange feeling. Now, I've had this feeling before and I remember knowing it meant something bad. So I looked around for anything that may catch my attention, but there was nothing. So we kept playing, but I could not shake the feeling. So after about 30 minutes, we were preparing to leave, which all we had to do was go across the playground and jump the back fence. And we would just be across the street from our own house. So I go to get the basketball from the court and my brother follows. I get to the ball and decided to shoot a half-court shot. In mid-shot, there's this feeling again. So again, I stop and I look around. That's when I notice a man standing there on the other side of the fence on the sidewalk. He's looking at us, but he's not moving, just standing there. But I really pay him no mind and shoot the shot. Of course, I missed it, but the ball hits the rim and it bounced near the fence. I race over to get it, trying to beat my brother to it. And I reach down to get it, and there's that feeling again. So I look over my shoulder. The guy is still there, just watching us. Now he's walking along the fence, running his hand along the fence, just staring at us. Not once did his eyes come off of us. Did not notice. He's heading to the fence entrance. Now I knew that being next to the busy street, people could see us as they passed. But that feeling was so strong, and this guy, he looked so creepy. And he keeps staring at us. Something in me yelled, run. And my feet started moving, and my brother was right behind me. 
We got to the corner of the school and stopped. We turned and looked, and he was entering the fence, and he was still watching, but now he's coming our way. I grabbed my brother and we sprinted around the back side of the school, in the block and a half to our house. We bust open the door and ran to our mother, and we told her what happened with tears coming on our face. She held us and told us everything would be okay and we're safe. She called the police, but nothing ever came of it. I don't know, ever since then, my brother and I were too afraid to go to the park by ourselves. This happened about three years ago. I was hanging out with my friends, Austin, Vincent, Charlie, and Bobby, while my parents were gone for the weekend. On Saturday afternoon, me and my friends were hanging out playing Battlefield 1 at Austin's house, chilling and having a good time. A couple hours later, we got bored and had nothing to do. But we went on a walk on a boardwalk, talking about what plans we had for the summer. After we talked about our summer plans, my friend Austin asked if we can go to the abandoned hospital. But I was thinking, that wouldn't be a good idea because it might be frightening and scary, but I agreed. Around 5 p.m., we got into my pickup truck and drove there. We got there around 6.30 p.m., and I parked my truck next to the entrance in case anything happens while we're checking the hospital out. When we got inside the hospital, it was a little bit creepy, but the hallways and the other rooms were empty. About 20 minutes later, we heard something that made our hearts drop. It was the sound of a girl screaming, saying, help, somebody help me. Then I heard someone saying, shut your mouth. We followed the sound all the way up the stairs, and when we got there, we saw a dim light from the room. As we got closer, I told my friends to not move a muscle. As I peeked through the room, I saw a girl taped to the chair. After I looked at the girl, I quietly told my friends to come to the room and help. After we helped the girl, she thanked us. She told us her name was Hannah. She also said that she was kidnapped by a man three weeks ago while coming home from college for the summer. We decided to get back to my truck, but suddenly we saw a movement coming from the stairway. And we decided to find an empty dark room and hid there until someone passed us. After a minute or two of hiding in the dark room, we saw some guy wearing a flannel shirt, jeans, boots, and holding a machete. After the man passed us, we got out the room quietly without making any noise. Before we got to the exit, we heard the man screaming and yelling for the girl. We started running to my truck so my friends jumped in the back of the bed and then we quickly started the engine. And as I started the engine, my friend Austin yelled for me to hurry up. After my friend Austin yelled, I looked behind us and it was the man charging us with the machete. So I quickly drove off and called the police. After we escaped, we pulled in at a gas station waiting for the cops to show up and told them exactly what happened. After we told the police where the hospital was, they went over there and investigated, and they caught the man surprisingly. He was taken into custody and got charged with kidnapping. After the police took him away, they told us they've been looking for this guy for five years and said he had prior convictions. The ambulance took her to the hospital, and then we went home and decided to never go to places like that again. I still can't stop thinking about what would have happened if that guy would have caught us. More importantly, what would have happened to Hannah if we never showed up? One night, while walking home, it started raining. Just what I needed, I thought to myself. I had no umbrella and I was in the middle of a road that crosses a forest. With no place to cover, I decided to keep walking and wait for a car to pass and maybe hitchhike. Around 10 minutes later, I started listening to a car approaching from behind. I looked back and the car stopped by my side. Slowly, the car window opens and I could see a man inside. It was dark, so I couldn't see his face. I heard the man ask, do you need a ride, son? 
I told him yes, please, because there's no way I was going to keep walking in this rain. This guy looked like an old man. He was skinny, with a wrinkly face. He didn't look dangerous at all. He actually seemed nice. We did some small talk until I was reaching my destination. I told the guy to drop me here and I could walk the rest. The rain had stopped by now. The guy said nothing, so I repeated again. You can drop me here. He says, no, 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 not yet. You're not ready. What? I thought to myself, I'm not ready for what? I was getting nervous, so I tried one more time. Please, sir, let me out here. He looks at me with his eyes wide open. Now I can see his face. The guy looked old and his face was wrinkled with sharp teeth and he said, I said no. I felt sick and I thought I was going to throw up. I was stuck there with that guy. I thought my only way out would be to open the door. I try opening the door but it was locked and I am in full panic by now. I feel a weakness going through my body as I feel myself pass out. Finally my eyes close and everything goes black. I woke up in the bed. I look around and it looks like a shack. The place looks trashed and smells terrible. At the side of the bed I see some basic medical equipment. I listen to footsteps outside near the door. Without having a lot of time I pretend I am still knocked out and I wait. I don't keep my eyes shut. I leave a small opening. I wanted to see who was coming. The door opens. I see someone. I keep opening and closing my eyes very little to make sure he doesn't see I'm watching him. He reaches my side of the bed. He turns to the other side and starts picking up the medical tools. What is he going to do to me, I thought. With very little time to make a decision, I needed to do something quick or God knows what will happen. I gained courage and I slowly get up. I started running to the door. While I was reaching to the door, I took a glimpse on the right and there was an open door. Inside is an image that I would never forget. I saw a body of some random person and I wanted to throw up, but right now I needed to escape. I opened the door and I ran through the woods. It was very dark. I couldn't see where I was going, but I didn't care. I just needed to be far away from that place. Finally, I arrived at the main road and I kept running. I found an open diner. I went inside and used their phone to call the cops. I gave the police a report of what happened. Then they took me safely home. A few months later, I saw on TV that the fugitive from an asylum was caught. He was living in a cabin in the woods. It was the same guy that kidnapped me. Suddenly, I had the same feeling from that night. But at least the guy had been caught. Never again in my life have I hitchhiked. I used to be a huge gamer a few years back as a teen. It kept me in the house away from trouble, but I would always stay home and my family would go out to do usual family things, like go to movies, dinner, and family trips. So spring break one year, my family booked a trip to Disney World. I didn't want to go. My parents didn't argue because I had a bad attitude, and I would usually ruin the trips on purpose with my attitude. I was 17 at the time and loved being by myself. The first two days went smooth. My parents left me with some money and stocked the fridge. I stayed in my room majority of the time playing games. Everything didn't stay smooth though. I went to the kitchen to grab food and went back to my room. I became sleepy so I went to bed. In the middle of the night I heard the front door being messed with. I went to my door and I opened it. I heard it again. Then the front door opened. I closed my door and I ran to my bed, grabbed my phone, but I left my phone in the kitchen. There also wasn't a house phone. I went to my bed and I panicked. I got under the covers and I heard guys talking. Hey, grab everything valuable. There shouldn't be anyone here. If there is, no witnesses. I was freaking out and I can hear footsteps coming down the hall. They stopped right at my door. 
I can also hear other footsteps throughout the house going into every room. The guy at my door started yelling out to the other guys. Anyone in the other room? Two other guys answered no. Then he entered my room. I was so afraid because I knew he can see me under the covers. Someone else yelled out to him to see if anyone was in my room. For a second, he didn't answer. He just closed the door, but I can hear him breathing. He was still in my room. I can hear him walking to me. He got up to my bed. He started sniffing the covers that I was under, right by my face. He then yelled out that no one was in there, and they all walked out. I stayed under the covers for about 30 more minutes and ran out of my room to get my cell phone. These guys took a lot of stuff. I called the cops and my family came back early from Disney World. After that, I went everywhere with my family. And I didn't stay home by myself for a long, long time.